dung gate represents deliverance be repaired. Let the water gate represents preaching and teaching be repaired. Let the glory be repaired. Let the water flow through the utter gate into my life, past my ankles, past my loins, past my neck. Make my gates of carbuncles. My gates will be open continually to receive blessings. I command the north gate, the south gate, the east gate, and the west gate to open in my city to the king of glory. I rebuke all enemies that will stand in the gates and try to stop salvation from entering in. I pray for the apostolic gatekeepers of my city to arise and take their place. Let the gates of my life and city be shut to uncleanness, witchcraft, drugs, perversion, and wickedness in the name of Jesus. I pray for gateway cities in my nation to become gateways of righteousness and not iniquity. Lord, raise up Bethel churches that will be the gates of heaven. Lord, rise up the apostolic churches in the world. Yes, revelation in my region. God bless you. Thank you. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. For those of you that didn't recognize it, the Apostle John Eckhart wrote a book that is called The Prayers That Route Out Demons. And in this, he has a list of declarations. And I just thought as the year of the, um, the door, the open gates, uh, we're going to declare our gates open, the heavens, gates of heaven open, and the gates of hell closed. Amen. 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 Last week we talked about cleaning house, and this, this during the consecration, uh, it's, it's like a spiritual detox we're going through. We're, we're detoxing our spirit, and actually it's our soul man uh, that we're detoxing uh, because it tends to lead us in, in the way we, we, we conduct our lives. And so we're going through this soulish, spiritual detox this month, and last week we entitled our message, Cleaning House. Today we're going to talk about keys. Keys. I have a lot of scripture here. I want to lay a, a heavy duty, firm foundation because uh, we're going to, I just, woo. <laughs> I wish you could have been there with me in my prayer time last night. I mean, angels ascending and descending. Wow, dreams and visions like never before. The presence of God. Amen. He's yeah. just uh, assuring me that there are amazing things that are about to break forth. Yeah. I'm telling you, you can go anywhere to be mediocre, but mediocre will not have a seat in this house. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. If you come in here, you will be changed. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And this is the year. It's all breaking off, as they say in the world. Yeah. This is the year we're all going to get lit like never before. And I'm not talking about some weed. I'm not talking about some some drug or some medicinal thing. I'm talking about getting high with the most high, the Holy Ghost fire. The Bible says be not drunk with wine where it's excess, but be filled with the Spirit. So we can say like the people in the world, they see a drunk person, oh, that's just that, that, that Spirit talking, that, that, that bottle talking. And when we go out into the world, they say, oh yeah, that's just the Spirit talking, the Spirit of the Most High God speaking through us. Amen. Amen. So this is a decade of the mouth and so that's the 80s, according to the, the Hebrew or the Jewish calendar, the 80s, and the, it's year four, which coincides with the, our calendar, the Roman calendar, uh, 24, it's the year 84 in the, the Jewish calendar, and that four symbolizes uh, uh, the door. So this year, they're saying, and we're saying in agreement with them, that this year, the mouth opens the door. And I want to just say to you today that I believe that the keys that God has given us mm -hmm. are voice activated. Yes, yes. Voice activated. That's why we're doing the declarations of what we believe. Good to see. Is that Sister Brenda? Nope. No. Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn. Okay. Okay. Just see some eyes peeping out at me. <laughs> Amen. So good to see you. And all of the, those of you we haven't seen in a while, we, we're, it's so good to see you um, to... The, those folks that were staying home today must have called you and said, come on, uh, there's going to be a seat open. And uh, we thank God that you heeded the call. We, we thank you. 
So this is the year of declaring the doors will be open in our life. So last week we were talking about cleaning house, and, and we hopefully made a case that our bodies are the houses of the Spirit of God. We are where God dwells, and there's Old Testament examples right from Genesis. Uh, it refers to, the, the very first referral to a house is the ark of the ark, the ark, where Noah uh, came into the house and found safety from what was going on. And then we see uh, one of the references to our statements is when, uh, uh, who was it, Jacob, who laid down in Bethel, and he said, this is the house of God, the gate of heaven. Uh, and and he's, he's seeing angels ascending and descending. This is where the glory of God is made manifest. And then in the New Testament, uh, God says that you are my temples. You are my house. Yeah. Moses made a, a, a tabernacle uh, uh, in the wilderness while they were traveling, a place where they could come and worship and where God would dwell. Then David made his tabernacle, and he had a place where they would worship God 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and that's where God would dwell. If you wanted to meet God, you go to the tent, you go to the tabernacle, you hang out, and you can encounter God. But God says, I've given you a new and a better covenant. The reason I have you doing the, the communion or the Lord's Supper is to remind you uh, that the the, the first part, he said, this is my body that was broken for you. My body was broken that you might be healed, you might be fixed, but you also take the cup, the, the wine, the juice. And he said, this is the New Testament in my blood. Yeah. And what is that New Testament? That New Testament is, no longer will I dwell in houses of stone, brick and mortar, uh, but I'm coming to live in you. John chapter 14 is a good one to read. It talks about how Jesus says, first, I must go away, but I'm sending you a comforter. The Holy Spirit will come live in you. And then he said, I will come, and I'll live in you. That's Jesus talking. And then he said, if you keep my commandments, I'll go back to the Father. And the Father and I, we will come. And he says, I, in the King James, says, I, we will make our abode in you, meaning I will make my house on the inside of you. You will be my house. You will be where we live. But there's been a debate in Christianity for a long time that says if, if you are saved, if you've given your heart to Jesus Christ, your, your house, your body, your being to Jesus Christ, can you be possessed by the devil? And I'm here to tell you today, I don't believe if you've given possession to God, you can be possessed by the devil. But why is it that we see so many Christians come into church, shout, say amen at the right time, they read their Bibles, they pray like everyone else prays, they hook a Messiah like everyone else, uh, uh, but then they go out and live such damnable lives, yeah. broke, busted, disgusted, you, they, the people get on their nerves and they give you a piece of their mind, and they've given out so much of their mind they have very little left. Why is that among the people of God? Why is it that the children of God, the most high, are among the most broke, busted, and disgusted people of the earth? We have become the laughing stock in the, in the movies and television. The bad guys, the crazy person, is always the Christian. He's not the Muslim, he's the Christian. Why is that? Because there's power if we ever find out who we are. When we find out who we are, that's what, that's what Pharaoh was afraid of, uh, about the Israelites. He was so afraid that the, the Jewish people in Egypt were so powerful and so prosperous, and he, he recognized the hand of God on their life. He said, let us enslave them unless they overtake us because they are more powerful than us. Yeah. And so it was just a mind game. They thought, oh, these powerful Egyptians, the greatest, most powerful nation in the whole earth, we can't do anything. We can't break out of this slavery. But Jesus sent a deliverer. And I believe today, and so many Christians are falling into that same mindset, you can't fight City Hall. You can't go up against the government. It's powerful. They have money. They have connections. Wake up dead one morning, you get on the wrong side. Hallelujah. My introduction was way too long. Hallelujah. I just want to talk about two keys. The title of the sermon is keys. I want to talk about two keys. 
but I want to read a lot of scripture, as I said, to, to lay a very firm foundation. I want to start by uh, the Apostle Paul's decree over the church or his prayer over the church in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. And I want to read that prayer, what he's praying or decreeing over the church. And when I say church, I mean the ecclesia. What's the ecclesia? A church is a house of worship where the people come and worship and pray, but ecclesia is a governing body. The ecclesia is a place of people, uh, a group of people who serve the Lord, say Christians, whatever you want to call them, uh, and they influence society. The neighborhood should be different because the church is there or the ecclesia is there. The city should be different. And so this is what he's declaring over, the, they changed the word to church, but the real, when you see church, it's ecclesia. So uh, Ephesians 1, 17, and it reads, that the Lord God, or the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That's what he's declaring and decreeing. I want you to have wisdom and revelation. Jesus told us to pray. Mm -hmm. He taught us how to pray. He said, give us this day our daily bread. The Bible has a lot of symbolism, and the daily bread is the revelation of God. Give us today the revelation that we need, the understanding that we need. Yes, yes, yes. You can have all the intelligence you want, but if you don't have the knowledge, it does you no good. You have to know. Amen. You have to know. You have to know. So he's praying that you have the understanding, that you have the uh, wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. You have to know him. You have to know the benefits. I often talk about, uh, while I worked at the University of Pennsylvania, they give you a day, uh, an hour out of your work day, and they go through the major benefits. Healthcare, dental, ear bone, you know, life insurance, sick time, those things, the basic ones. Then they give you a book. And you know, was, I, I, I openly admit, I've been there 10 years before I, I really read through the whole book. What? I get discount on cell phone, discount on car rentals, discount on a, a guaranteed mortgage if I buy a house in a certain neighborhood. I had all these benefits nobody told me about, but you had the book all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So many Christians have the book all the time. It's open on their coffee table. I've seen the book open on the back window of their car. It doesn't, you know, no good. It doesn't, I don't care how many Bible apps you have on your phone. If they're not in your heart, yeah. if you don't know them, yeah. all the intelligence in the world is not going to make a difference. Yeah. So this is what he's declaring. Wisdom and revelation of knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened. You need to understand what you know. That you may know what is the hope of his calling what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? God has inherited us. What has he inherited? He's inherited us to represent him in the earth. Who is he? He is the king of the universe. We've got to realize what God has inherited. He hasn't inherited a nothing and nobody. Every human being, every human being is priceless, is a masterpiece because they're a piece of the master. Hallelujah. Uh, verse 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ and when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. I know that's a mouthful, especially uh, if you're, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of church jargon in there. But what they're saying is God paid the ultimate price. Amen. Some of you might say, well, I was born into poverty. I was born into iniquity. My, my ancestry, they're a bunch of druggies and dope addicts, fornicators or whatever. <laughs> They, 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 had not, they were into witchcraft and all kinds of ungodliness. And that, that's just my lot in life. And God said, no, it doesn't have to be. He said, I sent my son into the world to change your ancestry. And he said, if you're born a certain way, as one popular uh, singer says, uh, you know, baby, I was born this way. Well, I want to tell you, baby, be born again. Amen. Just be born again. Then you'll have a new father. 
Then you have new promises. Then you have a new inheritance. Hallelujah. Let's jump now to Revelations chapter 1, verses 12 through 18. We're going to come back. You might want to leave a finger there in Ephesians. We're going to come back there. Revelations chapter 1, the last book, first chapter of the last book, verse 12, and it reads, Then I turned to see the vo voice that spoke with me, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man. The Son of Man is Jesus Christ. Jesus refers to himself as the Son of Man, yeah. saying or emphasizing or underlining that anyone who's born of a man can be like me. Okay? One like the Son of Man, it's in capital letters to let you know that he's talking about Jesus, clothed with a garment down to the feet and girded about the chest with a golden band. And his head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. Fire in the Bible is always symbolic of purifying, cleansing, getting rid of the, the, the no good part. So his, his eyes, just looking at you, does something to you. His eyes brings the conviction and it shows you and exposes the wrong that's in your life. Yeah. And so his eyes are cleansing. Okay, verse 15. And his feet were like fine brass, as if refined in a furnace. Again, reference to fire, the furnace. He's pure, he's holy, as though he's been refined in a, a fiery place. And his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars out of his mouth with a sharp two-edged sword, talking about the power of his word, declarations, declaring a thing, changes, shifts things. When we're like Jesus and we speak his words, it shifts things in the atmosphere. Amen. His word is a mighty two-edged sword, and his countenance or his face was like the sun shining in its strength. God is saying in the last days, we, his people, are going to radiate like the sun. We're going to yes. display the glory yes. of God. Yes. Verse 17, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades. Now, this word Hades means the hidden things. There's several words in the Bible that uh, are translated hell, and the, the one of, this is one of them, Hades. And this Hades means the hidden things, the things that we can't figure out on our own. We can't search them. He said, I have the keys to those hidden things and of death. I have the key, the solution to death talking about keys today, so I want you to hear what he said. This is Jesus Christ. Now, after he's de died, risen again, seated at the right hand of the Father, all power and all authority is given to him, and now he's saying, I have the keys yes. to the hidden things, to Hades, and I have the keys to death. Yes. Now, turn back to Ephesians chapter 1. Let's pick up where we left off. So he just said, Peter, I mean, Paul was saying, uh, seated with him at the right hand of, in heavenly places. Verse 21, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. What he's saying that Jesus has all authority and we are like him. We are yes. with him. Oh, yes. And we're going to have power and authority over all the power, yes. powers of the earth yes. And not just on the earth. Mm -hmm. We're going to have more power and authority in the earth than Putin, yes. than Biden, than whoever. Oh, Now, we're going to have more power and authority over the princes and the powers of the air. Yep. Lucifer and all of his imps. Mm -hmm. Beelzebub. Mm -hmm. All those dudes. We have more authority because we're seated together yes. with Christ. Yes. And you're asking, really? I've never seen that. I hear you talking, but I don't see any. And so this is where we're going to move. Our, 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 bi our, our theology is way up here, but our biography is way down here. God said, this year, I'm going to cause you to take a giant leap toward where you believe. 
you've heard about a thing, you've heard about Jesus Christ and all that he's done, and you say, that's him. But he's not where I am right now. But he should be, and he is. If you're, you are the temple of God, he lives in you. The problem is, we talked about last week, you, whether you know it or not, I, whether I know it or not, have sometimes allowed some of those rooms to be occupied and some of you, even in your home, there's a there's a closet, a basement, a crawl space that you just keep shut. You never even think about it anymore. You got all kinds of creepy crawlies in there, and you don't even think about it. And you've forgotten that it exists. But because it's just there and, and deteriorating and all kinds of spiders and whatever is going on in there, it's deteriorating the, the value of your property. And so you have a home inspector come and say, what's behind that door? You know, I don't even know. It's been so long. I couldn't even tell you. And, and so that's what we're getting at today. The reason we're not functioning on this very high level that the Word of God is saying we should is because we've closed off areas of our lives and we've, we've allowed horrible things in there or that, that's just the way uh, I am because of my mother, because of my father, because uh, I, I suffered this trauma in life and so I just close it off and I'll just, I'll just live and I'll just pray that Jesus comes back so that I never have to deal with it. Well, God says the way to get to where I am, we're going to have to deal with it. And it's not going to be pretty. But once we're on the other side of dealing with it, it's going to be glorious. And it's going to be so that you can't keep it to yourself. I was standing in church a couple of weeks ago, and this song came to me out of nowhere. Uh, something I, I don't even know that I remember this song for 10, 15, 20 years, maybe 30 years. So somebody told me of the joy that they had. And then they told me that in sorrow, they could be glad. And then they told me that once they were blind, but now, once they were bound, but now set free. Andre Krapp sang this song before you were born, way before you were born, like in the uh, 70s, 80s, wow. And I said, I didn't think it could be until it happened to me. I, I hear what you're saying, Bible. I, I hear what you're saying, but I'm not seeing it in my life. You're going to see it. You're going to see it. You're going to see it this year. Far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but in the age to come. And he put all things under his feet, listen, and gave him to be head over all things to the church, and that church means ecclesia, yes. and his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Okay, what is he saying? Jesus is the head of the church. Yes. Okay, the head is nothing unless it has a body, right? Yes. And he said, you, the church, is the body of Christ. Yes. Yes. And I don't know what you think of yourself or how great or how little or how less little you think of yourself on the body, body even if you're the skin on the feet the bottom side of Jesus. You're still above the enemy. You're still trampling the devil under your feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. He put all things, verse 22, put all things under his feet. Even if you're the skin on the bottom feet. He said you're going to trample him. Put all those things under the feet of the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. Quickly. I'm running out of time. I'm going to get to the two keys. If you get done before I do, you, the door is not locked. Uh, but I pray that you stay till the end. We're, we're, we're going to get to this. Genesis. Very first book. We went to the last book. Now let's go to the very first book. The very first chapter. And we're going to read uh, 26 through 28. This is God's intention for man from the beginning. This is what God intended for man from the beginning. Genesis 1, 26 says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image. He didn't say that about zebras or dogs. Uh, sometimes uh, we stop a whole development in the United States. We can't drill for oil because the spotted wood owl uh, will be disrupted and will have to nest somewhere else. So we have to stop production of 
trillions of dollars worth of oil that can benefit mankind because uh, some uh, uh, spotted three-toed lizard uh, will be uh, uh, aggravated and will have to move elsewhere. But God is saying this man is unique in the earth. Man is special. He said, I have created man after my own image, after God. We are created in the image of God. Yes, the beasts of the field were created by the dirt, the earth, and so were we, created by the dust of the earth, the Bible says. But man was special. He said, I breathe my divinity into man. That's what makes man different. I've already told you that we are masterpieces because we are a piece of the master. We have a part of us that can never die. Nope. Created in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle and all the earth and all the creeping, every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. We have power and authority over creeps. So if you ever encounter a creep, just remember, I have authority over every creeping thing over the, the earth. If somebody creeps you out, say, I have authority. I take authority. You creep? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God created he him, male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. God's plan was, I've given you authority. Uh -huh. That's dominion. I've given you dominion over the whole earth. But the whole earth isn't the Garden of Eden. I'm, I'm telling I'm reading between the lines here. I sent you in Eden. Eden is perfect. It's, it's perfectly watered and everything. The fruit comes when it's supposed to come. He said, but I've given you the whole earth. I want Eden to be an example for you. And I want you to make the whole earth, like he said, subdue it. Now you go out and make the rest of the earth like the example that I've shown you. That's what man was supposed to do. But before he did that, or before he could or would do that, he sinned. And he gave all of his dominion over the enemy. And from that day until Jesus died on the cross, yes, yes. Satan had authority in the earth. Yes. Man had no authority. And so what God did, we sent Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ died, and he gave mankind back the authority. So he wrote the law. Man now has authority given back. The problem is, most men don't realize it. And everything that the enemy, the devil, does on the earth, he has to get permission from men. Yes, yes. And so why is the world so wicked as it is? Oh. It's because men have surrendered, and women, don't, I don't want you to be feeling left out. Oh, <laughs> you surrendered your authority, so wickedness is pervasive in the earth, yes. although Jesus on the law books, if you go back and see, he's given you authority. Yes. Yes. So then we have to look to the Christians. Well, the Christians should know better. You go to the Christians, why aren't they exercising their authority? He even called you ecclesias, a houses that have authority in their region. It's because they're all sitting in church. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Calgon, take me away. Where is the rapture? We're so rapture focused that we're forgetting that our responsibility is to subdue the earth. When there's shootings in the earth, we have to subdue it. When there's injustice in the earth, we have to subdue it. We have to declare, open our mouths and declare what God is saying. Amen. Uh, this is still on the introduction. I'm going to get to the two keys. I am. Yes. I declare it, so it's going to be so. And God created us in his own image, in the image of God. I, I've read all that. Uh, that's Galatians. Now, let's jump back to Revelation, the last book. That was God's intention from the beginning. Now, let's go back to Revelation chapter 5. Last book, chapter 5, verse 9. I'm going to read this in the Passion Version, just because I like one word uh, a little better. Re Revelations 5, verses 9 and 10. And they were all singing this new song of praise to the Lamb. The Lamb is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Because you were slaughtered for us, you are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals. Your blood was the price paid to redeem us. 
You purchased us to bring us to God out of every tribe, language, people group, and nation. I just want to pause there for a minute. That's where God is saying that everybody has the same opportunity. I don't care if you've come from the Rockefeller lines or the Flintstone line. I don't care if you're black, white, or purple, if you have a mother and a father. I'm not saying that they live with you or step with you, but if you had a man and a woman come together to produce you, you are eligible. You are eligible out of every tribe. I don't care what language you speak, if you speak Ebonics, if you speak Spanish, if you speak Swahili, every language, God says you're invited. Yeah. Every people group. Yeah. I don't care if your ancestors were slaves or they were slave masters. You're all invited. You're all equal. And I, what I've been telling people, I said, listen, I don't want to hear this, this uh, black superiority nonsense. Black superiority is just as evil as white superiority. Yeah. All of us are equal in the eyes of God, and he has invited us all equally to come to him Amen. to become the sons of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Verse 10. You have chosen us to serve our God and formed us into a kingdom of priests who reign on the earth. God has chosen everyone. Everyone, every tribe, every language, every people group, every nation. Americans aren't, aren't the privileged group. No. God has not favored Americans over Canadians or Mexicans. Yeah. Yeah. We, we have groups that write us from other nations, say, you're, you're in blessed America, and we want you to support our ministry and give us all your money because you're so blessed. You're so blessed. Wait a minute. Who's your father? Who's your daddy? Is it your daddy, my daddy? I get my allowance from my daddy. You can get your allowance from your daddy. Yes. 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 Don't make the excuse because I was born in an impoverished nation. You talk to God, and when God touches my heart to give, I will give. But don't you demand that I give to you because I was born in America and you are not. I'm not, I'm not condemning anyone who supports an international ministry. I'm not, I'm not telling you not to give. I'm just telling you that they, the whole world has got to learn we serve the same God. Yes. Okay. Revelations, flip back a couple of pages. So Revelations 3, verse 7 and 8. And everyone in Philadelphia, and at least every Christian in Philadelphia should know uh, these verses. Revelations chapter 3, verses 7 and 8. Wow. God is doing a supernatural time miracle. It looks like that clock is standing still. Is that right? <laughs> Amen. Revelation 3, 7, and 8. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write, this city was named after this city in the Bible, Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. He said, write these things. Say, he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David. Wow, we just talked a little bit earlier about the one who had the key over hell and death, or Hades and death. Now he's saying, this, we're, he's talking about the Church of Philadelphia, and he said, he who has the key of David, who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. Verse 8, I know your works. I see, I have set, see, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Okay. First key. The first key is repentance. Yes. Now, I'm not talking about that time when you first came to God and were first saved and you had all these, these uh, damnable things going on in your life. I'm not talking about that kind of repentance. Well, I'm talking about uh, the repentance that Jesus talked about in his prayer. Uh, he says, you know, when you pray, pray this way. Our Father which is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. He said, give us this day our daily bread. We talked about that. Give us the revelation. See, every day we need to come to God and repent. Repent means to turn. Yes. See, just going down through the day, we'll hear something. Or we'll read something. And they say, that, 
sounds pretty good, and we alter our course just a little bit because our flesh kind of likes it. It's not quite perfectly aligned with God, but we just alter just a little bit. And it, it happens to all of us. We'll hear a preacher because a preacher said it. You know, the preacher isn't always right. I am not all right. I know that's hard for you to believe. But I'm not always right. So I encourage you, go home and read the scriptures. And Jesus said, the, 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 the letter kill it. The Bible will kill you. But, but the Spirit of God makes us alive. Yes. We need to read the Word of God, asking God, God, what are you saying? Yes. Not what, how I can twist it, not how I can make an origami swan out of it, but how, what are you saying to me personally? Yes. 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 So what I'm saying, we have to, key number one, repent. Yes. God, I think I know what's right, but Lord, hear Correct my course. If I'm off even a little bit today, set me on the right path. Every day, take that key and say, God, forgive me. God, correct my course. I don't want to be going because if I go off just a little bit today, nobody notices. Ten years down the line, I'll be so far away, nobody recognizes me. God, correct me early on, in the beginning stages. Yes. Be quick to repent. Yes. God, did I do something? Oh, forgive me. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what repentance does as a Christian? It resets our boldness. Yes. Yes. You know, if, if you know you got a little something going on, you know you're, if you were to die right now, you'll go to heaven, but you got a little something nagging at your Holy Spirit is like whispering in your ears, you should take care of this, and, and all of a sudden you come up against some demon. The last thing you want to hear that demon say is remind you of what you got going on. So that causes you to back down a little bit. All right, I don't want to mess with you today, devil. You just, all right, I, I beat the devil running and I'm so glad. Hallelujah. But when we repent, when we do it daily, God, course correct me. Somebody said something and I really believed it. I really want it to be true, but God, you know. Yes. Your middle name is truth. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, yes. and I am the life. Correct me, correct my thinking, renew my mind. God, I repent from allowing my thoughts, my will, my reasoning to get mixed into your word. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Create in me a clean heart and renew the right yes. spirit yes. within me. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So it resets our boldness now that we know we're clean. We know we're on the right track. Yes. When the devil gets up in our face, we can stand flat-footed. We don't have to back up. We don't have to beat the devil running. I said, just take that running out of the sentence. I just beat the devil. Yes. Why? Because I have boldness. Because like Jesus, he said, when the enemy, the devil comes to me, he can find nothing in me. We need to be able to say that the only way we can do that is by keeping our confessions up to date. Yes, yes. And you don't have to wait till the next day. Amen. You might have repented in the morning, but by noon you might have got a little, you might have a little question. Did I do the right thing? Mm -hmm. I don't know, but God forgive me. I, I want to walk on the straight yes, and the narrow. Yes, yes. Repentance. Mm -hmm. It eliminates the orphan spirit. Mm -hmm. It eliminates the feeling of separation. See, God never separates himself from humanity. Never. A lot of preachers are teaching sin will separate you from God. No, it's your thinking. God is mad at me. I got to hide. My, that's what Adam did. Yes. Adam ran away from God. But if you read the story, God chased Adam. Yes. Adam heard God coming and he went and hid. God is always pursuing you. And thank God he does. Because while we were yet sinners, when we had no mind to seek out what God wanted, well, we didn't care two hoots about his will and what he had done for us. He pursued us and he wooed us and he, and he orchestrated things in our life that will cause us to turn to him. He will allow life to smack you upside the head so that, God, what in the world is going on? Oh, I thought you would finally acknowledge me. What have you got going on? I said, I got great things for you. In the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. You haven't experienced joy in a long time. Yeah, you, you, you got drunk and thought you would experience joy, but you, you got felt like someone hit you in the head with a baseball after you 
got drunk, and, and you, you, you got some more drugs, and you got high, thinking that would bring joy, but that only lasts for a little while. You, you found someone else to hook up with, and you thought that would bring you joy, but that only lasts for a little. I want to give you a joy that will never end. Not only that, I want to put within you a fountain of joy. Whenever you're feeling a little bit of down, you just call on me, and that fountain will spur up, and you say, take joy, my soul. The Lord is on my side. Hallelujah. What can my enemies uh, do unto me? No longer an orphan. No longer an outcast. I am a son of God. Hallelujah. Key number one. Revelation again, chapter six. Now, I maybe I need to repent right here because I taught this differently. I know I taught this differently uh, several years ago, but I got a new revelation uh, in Revelation chapter six. Verses 1 and 2, and it says, Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying, With a voice like thunder, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him. And he went out conquering and to conquer. What I felt like God is saying when we surrender our bodies, our beings to him as a temple of his, he said, now I'm going to go out and conquer every room in that house. We're going to go through it door by door. But see, what happens is we'll, we'll make excuses. Okay, Jesus, you got the whole house, but let's not open that door. I, 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 I got it buried. I don't want to deal with it. And Jesus said, okay, we'll come back to that. Well, what God is saying, we've, come, we've gone through everywhere else. Now I'm coming back with the keys. Because you had it on lockdown. You didn't want to deal with that anymore. It hurt too bad at the time. It made me too angry. And if I open that door, I, I don't know what might happen. I might revert back to my old ways if I unleash that thing. But Jesus said, no, we got to clean that closet out. we got to clean that basement out. we got to get that junk out because I want the whole house. I want the whole house. Yes, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And he said, I'm coming to conquer. Yes. I'm com coming to conquer first and foremost my people. Yes. Right here you see Jesus is coming by himself. It just talks about he who sat on this, this white horse. He's coming to conquer and to conquer. But then in Revelation 19, he's coming again with a host. Yes. That's all of us. To rule and to reign in the earth. When we get our houses cleaned out, we'll be like him. John says in the in First John, I believe it's the third chapter, he said, uh, Now are we the sons of God, but it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but when he shall appear. And a lot of people, I believe, got that a little bit wrong. They think that's when the rapture comes or when we go to be to heaven. Go to heaven, we'll be like Jesus. No, he, I believe it's when we get the revelation of who he is and who we are. We're going to be just like him. When we get that revelation that who we are, we will be just like him. Are you like Jesus Christ right now? See, there's a misconception today. We think and because we come to church, we're trying to be good Christians. And that's a lie from the pit of hell. We're not trying to be good Christians because Christians is a name given to the religious folks or the, 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 those that follow Christ by the world. No, I'm not trying to be a good Christian. I'm going to be a son of God. Yes. It should be our desire. God, I want to be a son of God. That's, Jesus said in, in John chapter 1 verse uh, 10 or 11 or so, he says he came to his own, but his own received him not, but as many as received him. So he talks about those that have received him. Those that have received Jesus, you come into the family of God, but you come in like a servant, just like a baby can't rule an empire. He's still a baby. He's still got to be fed by someone else, got to be clothed, potty trained, all of that discipline, learn rules, learn manners, learn all of these things. And that's when we come into the kingdom like that baby. He said, but to them who are in the kingdom, I give you the power to become the son of God. When you become a son of God, you can become just like Jesus. It goes on to say in the book of uh, 1 John, it says, as he is, so are we in this world. So many churches are teaching about Jesus Christ uh, as he was before the cross. 
That's amazing. If I could be like Jesus before the cross every day of my life, that would be so awesome. I'd never be hungry. I'd just turn these, multiply these loaves. Be more like uh, Chick-fil-A sandwiches. I'd just multiply them, never have to spend another. Uh, when I want to get somewhere, you know, I can speedily walk across oceans. And well, uh, That would be great. That was before. That was before he died. But after he died, he said, all power in heaven and earth is given to me. Before he died, he said, all power in the earth is given to me. But after he died, he said, all power in heaven and in earth is given to me. We will be like he is right now in the earth. Key number one, daily repent, daily course correct. God, today, make me, keep me on the right path. Order my steps. Every step. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Have you, are you having the Lord order each and every one of your steps? Sometimes we get way out here in left field and say, God, how did I get here? How did I get in all this debt? How did I get married to this crazy person? How did I have all... Uh, all these children all over the city. Well, you wanted to be a pastor. No. Um, because we haven't daily come back to God. God, order my steps. Order my steps. I heard Miles Moreau said, he said, I never pray for the things that we need because Jesus said that's already covered. Yeah. So many of us are praying, God, give me some food to eat. God, give me some money. God, give me a place to stay. These things are the things that Gentiles seek after. Those are the elementary things. But that's our focus. But God said, I'm telling you today, I want you to come up here. I want you to be my sons and daughters. And I want you to act like it. I want you to subdue the earth. I want you to change the block that you live on. I want you to, when you come together, you're a powerful force. Two are better than one. I want to see explosions come out of the church. When the doors open and you leave, traffic should stop. And look and point and say, what in the world is going on there? Hallelujah. Key number two. Key number one, repentance. Key number two, and I'm almost done. Yielding. Yielding. It's one thing to open the door. Okay, Jesus, you got the key. You got the key to open the hidden places. Go into those hidden places. And then all of a sudden, you jump in front and say, No, no, Lord, you've seen it now. Close it back up and go away. God, I've confessed I've done wrong. And Jesus said, No, you got to let me get in there. See, the apostle Peter, when Jesus went to clean the disciples' feet, said, No, Jesus. My stink, smelly feet. I need to go to the podiatrist and get a mani and a pedi before I let you wash my feet. And Jesus looked and said, look, if you don't let me do it, I'll have nothing to do with you. Jesus is saying, I'm looking for someone who will sell out completely to me. Who will deny all other lovers and be faithful to the one. I'm looking for the one that will expose their, their most vile secrets to me and allow me to heal every hidden place in your heart. There's some things you've done in your life nobody knows about, and I don't want to know about. You don't have to confess to me. Thank God. You can go straight to Jesus and Jesus deal with this issue. I, I can't do it, and I don't know anyone else. Maybe 20 years of counseling might, might begin to get me straightened out, but God can do it in an instant. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Peter, he was not a stupid guy. He was impetuous sometimes. They would speak before turn. But when Jesus said, if you don't let me wash your feet, I don't want anything to do with you. He said, Jesus, not only wash my feet, but wash my head. Wash all of me. Yes, yes. And you know what Jesus said to him? He said a strange thing. He said, not all of you is messed up. Not all of you is jacked up. You've given me yourself. You've followed me these many years. It's just some things that need correction. Yes. It's the small foxes. Song of Solomon says, chapter 2, it says, it's the small foxes that destroy the vine. Yes. Yes. I think it was Abraham Lincoln who said that there's no external force that can bring down these United States of America. But he said, it is not the woodpecker on the outside, but it's the termites within that will bring down the tree. 
It's the eternal, internal stuff we got going on. Yeah. The devil can't make you do whatever you claim he made you do. I don't care what Flip Wilson said. Again, right. none of you know Flip Wilson. <laughs> Before your time. That was his saying, the devil made me do it. I always had it out. The devil made me do it, so I'm okay. The devil made me do it. Wasn't my doing. But God said, I want you to take ownership of your stink. Yes, God, this is a room in my house. Yes, it's jacked up. Yes, uh, other people pushed me into jacking up. And, then, and maybe uh, uh, somebody did something to me, and I just let it fester, and it got worse in my head, my mind. It made me sick. Men's hearts will fail them for fear, for things they've not allowed the Lord to correct in their lives. But God said, I'm looking for a people. Yes, yes, thank you, Lord. We're changing dispensations. For those of you that don't know what a dispensation is, it's a probationary period of time on the way God deals with man. And we have, in our whole lifetime, since Jesus, we've been in what's called the dispensation of grace. God has had mercy on us. He has forgiven us of our sin. But we're coming into what's called the dispensation or the time of the kingdom of God. And in the kingdom, we will walk not under grace, but we will walk in perfection. There are repeated scriptures throughout the word of God that says, I will perfect that which concerns you. In fact, he says, I'm coming back looking for a bride, a church without spot or wrinkle. In other words, I'm looking for a perfect bride. I'm looking for a bride that will allow me, when I come into her house, to allow me to go into every closet, every pantry, every crawl space, will allow me to look under the bed, even look under the throw rugs, in case you swept anything there. God, I repent. Course correct me today if I'm walking the wrong way. Order my very next step. Lord, I yield. Okay, God, I'm just going to step back and let you do what you do. I'm going to step back in my mess, my, my, my tormenting memories of my childhood, the way I was abused and ridiculed, bullied in school. I, I don't know what it is. The, 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 the crazy things I've done, the mean things I've done to other people, they have now tormented me. God, I'm going to step back. I'm to, here, here I am, God. You see, that's what true worship is. He said you can come into his uh, gates with thanksgiving, thanking God for everything that he's done for you. God, you bless me with this, you get bless me with that, the other thing. And then you enter into his courts with praise. That's when you begin to say, you know what, it doesn't matter. All these things are secondary, but I'm praising you, whether you're good to me or not. I'm praising you because you are God. Yes. You are the sovereign God. You are my king. You are my Lord. You are the Lord of my life, so I give you praise. Yes. But so few want to take the next step and go into the Holy of Holies, and that's into worship. Yes. When yeah. worship, you have to bring a sacrifice to the Lord and yeah. leave it on the altar. You can uh, give God your thanks and walk away. You can give him your praise and walk away. But worship is when you sell out. God, here, I'm going to just slaughter myself. I'm going to yeah. fillet myself open and lay up on the altar. Here I am, God, to worship you, yeah. for you to do with as you please. Yes. We used to sing a song, my life is not my own. Yeah. To him I belong. Yeah. I give myself, I give myself away. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All right, we're done. Second key, yield, yielding is humility of heart to surrender. To the, degree, to the degree that you yield, that is the degree to which you will rule in the earth. Jesus never chastised his disciples when they came to him wanting to be great. See, a lot of us will say, oh, you want to be so, you think you're so big, and you, you slap them down. Jesus didn't do that. He said, you want to be great? Let me tell you how. That's what Jesus, it's not, it's not about the way you think. He said, the way up is the way down. Yep. The one who's greatest of all is the one who's servant of all. Yes, yes. That will give you great, greatness to the degree that you're willing to yield yourself. To the degree you're willing to shut your mouth when somebody is bad-mouthing you. Your willingness to serve those that should be serving you. I, I hired them to keep this place clean, but they, they spilled some made a mess. I'm going to help them clean up. I, that's the way to greatness, to humble yourself yes. before his mighty hand. And he said he will exalt you, yes. yielding yourself. That is the degree to which we will rule in the earth. Yielding is the secret to power. With these two keys, we will win 
every area of our lives. The more you yield, the more you look like Christ. The more you look like Christ, the quicker the enemy must submit to your word. The victory won. The victory is won through yielding. Wow. Really bad when you can't read your own typing. The keys. We have the keys. Repent. I'm not talking to the about those that have not walked the Christian. I'm talking to those that, 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 that pat themselves on the back. I'm a good Christian. I'm, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm pretty good. To know today, God, I don't know. I don't even know if I messed up. I don't even know if I, I, I ate some, some bad fruit or, or listened to some bad teaching, bad theology. God said, I'll perfect that which concerns you. But if you come to me, come to me. But maybe there's someone in the house. Maybe there's someone online who has never uh, surrendered their heart to Jesus Christ. Not only is Jesus not in the house, locked out of some rooms in the house, he's locked out of your house entirely. I want to invite you today because God is going to raise up super men and super women. I keep saying DC Comics has got nothing on the people of God who get this revelation. We're going to see all kinds of amazing, mind-blowing things. Jesus promised. He said, not only will you do the works that I have done, but you will do greater works. Yeah. And you know what? I talk about some things that Jesus has already done that nobody else is talking about. Jesus was transfigured. Mm -hmm. Jesus had counsel with the uh, hosts of heaven. Mm -hmm. Jesus uh, walked on water. Jesus raised the dead. All of the things we should do. But the beginning is, say, God, here, I present myself to you. Doesn't cost any amount of money. No amount of service. Got into a little discussion last Sunday with a woman who served Allah. And she tried to convince me that we serve the same God. I said, fortunately, I've read the Quran. And the Quran says at least five times, Allah speaking says, I have no sons. And then he goes on to say what he can't do in the Quran. It's there. Allah says, I have no sons because I have no ability to find someone worthy to have my children. So I have no sons. So what does that make you? You say you're children of God, like we say we're children. But your God says he has no son. My God says, I love the world so much that I gave my only begotten son. My God calls himself Father. That son's name is Jesus. I said, you can go on with your religion, but I'm just telling you, we don't serve the same God. Your God is childless. My God has the only begotten son who gives others the ability to become sons. Yes. I can call myself a child of God. Yes. According to your book and your God, you cannot call yourself a child of God. I don't know. It doesn't sound like a contest to me. It's not that it should be a contest. But not only that, he said, Jesus paid for everything that you've done wrong. So now you stand righteous before me just by saying, I accept Jesus Christ into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Now you're in the family of God. Went on to tell this young lady, Allah says, you have to do enough stuff. You have to save yourself kiddo. You're not my son. You're not inheriting anything. At best, you can be a servant. And then you got to do enough good stuff for me to let you in on judgment day. And you won't know until judgment day. you got to save yourself. Well, what, what, what if I don't learn about this until I'm 90? I, I lived 90 years of doing dirt, and now you say i got to do more good than that? You're in trouble. But Jesus said, I know you can't pay for your own sins. That's the goodness of our God. And you know why so many people 
fail to accept God, the Creator God, the Son, Jesus Christ, because it just sounds so easy. But Jesus says in Matthew 11, chapter, verse 28 through 30, it says, Come unto me, all you that are labor and heavy laden. Has life beat you up? Has life smacked you around? Have you got hit with some unexpected twists and turns in life? He said, well, then you're a candidate. You're just the one I'm looking for. He said, come. Come with all your twisted beliefs, all your anger, all your hangouts, all your addictions. Come with all the nonsense. Don't, let's, let's, don't worry about evolution, virgin birth. Forget about all that. Just come. Just come to me and learn of me. That's yes, what he says. Yes, yes, you don't love me because you don't know me. Amen. Jesus said to know me is to love me. Yes, yes, I have exactly what you need. Christ is the answer. Yes. So I just want to encourage you today. Maybe there's someone in the house that has never done this. Or maybe you, you've turned away from uh, the lordship of Jesus Christ. There's no time like the present. Tomorrow is not promised. Just come to God and say, God, thank you for this chance. I accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. Forgive me of my sins and be the Lord of my life. It's that simple. Now, if anything were to happen to you, you'd go to heaven right now. If your life were to end, you'd be in heaven. Just on that simple prayer. You don't have to do any good works. You don't have to weigh good and bad and all that stuff. But I encourage you not to stop there because there's so many people that have been snuffed out with that simple prayer. It's not a magic bullet. Say it in your own words. Whatever it means, you mean business in your heart. I encourage you to go on and say, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. See, the yes. Holy Spirit will preserve you. Yes. It'll, it'll take out those lows and highs. It'll put you on a smoother path to him. Yes. You're still going to have difficulties in life, but he'll preserve you. Yes. He'll give you wi wisdom. He's a teacher. He's a revealer of all truth. Yeah. Ask God to fill you with his Holy Spirit. And don't even stop there. Say, Lord, there's this thing called speaking in tongues. I don't understand it. I don't understand it fully. Yes, Lord. But when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, one of the first gifts he gives you is the ability to speak in other tongues. Yes. You pray in a heavenly language yes. directly to the will of God. You pray yes. direct will of yes. God. And it says, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself. Yes. An edifice is a building. To edify the verb means to build up, to yes. strengthen, to fortify. Yes. Thank you, Lord. You see, sometimes we just get saved. We step out these doors and someone can spit at our feet and that will tick us off. We get in our car and someone cut in front of that enough to reset us right back to where we were. But with the Holy Spirit, he keep, helps us to keep ourselves under the submission of the Holy Spirit. And then daily, we begin to practice these two keys. God, correct my path today. God, I yield my members. I yield my entire body to you. I open every door. And you know, I like to uh, imagine these things. Sometimes in prayer, I just, Lord, I, I, I open every door in my house. I just imagine secret doors that I've forgotten about. Oh, yeah, my bed has these drawers on the side. Yeah, I haven't opened those. God, go in there. Look through all the picture books. Lift up the sofa pillows and anything that's not like it. Lord, I yield to you. I give you permission. Yes, yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Take it out. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And God will say, that's someone I can use. That's someone who I can converse with. That's someone I can show myself strong. This is the hour of deliverance, and deliverance is taking the land. And for all of you that have, have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I encourage you to get around fellow believers. There's strength in numbers, and if you need a good church, I can't think of a better one than this one right here. We're at 7501. Ogons Avenue, Philadelphia, Deliverance Tabernacle. But if there's a church close to you and it's a good, godly church, there's no problem with you going there. But you need to be around fellow believers. God bless you. Shalom. Until the next time.